the Lord, saints, and welcome to today's broadcast from the Solid Rock, featuring Dr. Herbert B. Robinson, Jr. We are glad you joined us, and we pray that today's message will be an added value to your life. Welcome, my beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this segment of From the Solid Rock. Please join me in saying, my hope is in God, my trust is in God, my faith is in God. Please affirm that by saying this, I anchor my belief in God. God bless you. Please enjoy the message. Praise the Lord, saints. Good to have you with us once again here. And we just thank God for you tuning in with us today. And let me thank all of you who have shown your support with us from the very beginning. And for those of you who have just gotten wise to us recently, don't be afraid to push the like button, whether you like it or not. Just let us know. Respond in some kind of way so that we might be able to determine what it is that we should do next. But for those of you who have supported me through uh, pats on the back and love and encouragement, I just want to thank you for all that you've done. It's not very easy to come to you every week with a word, with all of the things that I do. But this is something that God has put on my heart, and I'll continue to do it. There are times when I fumble the ball. There are times when I'm not up to par, not being as I should be. But thanks be to God, he's given me another chance. And that's the beautiful thing about God. He will give you another chance. If you have a Bible, refer to this passage of scripture in Genesis, the first chapter and the first verse that says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And that's what I want to talk about. In the beginning. You know, when I was a little boy, our family used to have dinner together every night. My father, mother, my two brothers, and my sister. We sat around the dinner table every night, telling each other about how our day was, enjoying the meal that was cooked. And when Daddy did the grace, all of us had to say a verse around the table. He taught us Bible verses. My preferred Bible verse when it came time to eat my dinner was, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I say that simply because all of us would love to know our beginning. As well as we have a beginning, we certainly will have an end. And it's in the beginning that is always stuck in my spirit simply because I've often wondered where I've come from. I know my mother and my father. I know my grandparents. And I don't want to really put my business out there across the globe because this is being broadcast all across the internet and whatnot. But I can only go back in my family history as far as my grandparents. I couldn't do the Roots thing, the Alex Haley thing, where I could look up Ch Chicken George and Kunta Kinte and Lizzie and all those names. I, I, I've been advised to go to Ancestry.com and all of that, but if you knew my family history, Ancestry.com wouldn't do me a bit of good. And I don't know exactly where it all began with my family. But I do know that life in and of itself began where God says in the beginning. That's where it all started. That's when it all began. I may never know in this life who my great, great, great grandparents were, where they were from, what kind of contributions did they make to the world. What did they do for God? Were they saved? I have no idea, and I may never know. 
All I know is that creation had a beginning. All creation had a beginning. You, me, and even though I may not be able to trace myself back physically, I can trace myself back spiritually because I was born again. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior and baptized in his name, I was made a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things became new. God lives in me, breathes in me. And I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ at nine years old. My father was a preacher and he opened the doors of the church and my brother and I walked down that aisle. My brother went before me, younger brother at that. And we both accepted Jesus Christ and it was time to be baptized. He was even baptized before me. I had this fear of water at that time. I've overcome it by the power of God, yes. But I've accepted the Lord in my life and I'm glad about it. I've had some moments that were not so great, even as a Christian. Slipped, stumbled, and failed. But the Lord has kept me all these years. From the very beginning even until now. And since I've been preaching the gospel, I think about the number of people that have been saved as a result of God's word coming across that pulpit. I've lost count on the people who've come to Christ under my leadership. I've lost count over the number of people who I've baptized. I used to keep a, a, a tally but so many people have gotten saved and come to Christ that I've just lost count. And it's real good that I have knowing that all those people are sealed by the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus until their day of redemption. We all will be redeemed. God will come back to claim us all because we belong to him. Because he did create us. As you see, creation does have a beginning. And there have been arguments from scientists and scholars and philosophers that have carried on for centuries about where we've come from and, 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 and what is the beginning of life. We've heard about Darwinism and uh, now you have artificial um, uh, insemination and all these kinds of things. But life has its own meaning, and only life knows its roots. Jesus said that he is the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the, unto the Father but by him. So the roots start with Jesus, who is God manifested in the flesh. At least that's what the Bible says. And I happen to believe what the Bible says because I've been carrying this word all of my days. Even when I wasn't worthy to be called a child of God. I've had some dark days. There have been some things in my life that I should not have done. But God kept me for a reason. It could be just to be sure that I talk about it now. I don't know, today could be the last day. But if it isn't, I still love God. If it is, I still love him. The Bible says to live is Christ, but to die is gain. I'll gain everything that the Lord has promised me because I do know that he has a place for me. He sent me here into this life as a reason of representing him. And all of us have a calling on our lives. You know that you've been called to do something for the Lord. You ignore it. God just doesn't make us and, and send us to earth without any purpose. Well, anyway, 
Even though these individuals have debated, have debated for years about the beginning, it's really sad that we mistreat life as we do. No matter when it began, we mistreat it terribly. We mistreat the lives of others. We have disregard for how other people are. We fail to prepare for life as we should. And some people just go aimlessly through life, just shrugging it off, killing one another as if life doesn't really matter. Destroying each other's reputations as if life does not matter. What does it matter when the beginning was if we don't respect life for what it is? If we don't do better than what we are? Jesus says, I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. He's given me an abundant life. He's blessed me beyond anything that I possibly imagined. And you know what? He's going to continue to bless me even more. Why? Because he's promised it. He's promised that he would. He said again, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long. This is a promise of the Lord. I've honored my parents. I didn't agree with all of the things that they would instruct me to do, but I honored them. I still honor them to this day. And I thank God for them because if it had not been for them, I would not have had a beginning. I would not have had this precious thing called life. Jesus gives us this life and expects us to make something out of it until we reach eternity. And we cannot get to his eternal kingdom, his eternal kingdom, unless we confess him as our Lord and Savior. That's Bible. He gives us something called life. And we need to put a purpose and a value to it. We put so much value and purpose into things that don't even matter. Who cares who wins the Super Bowl? Who cares who the next NBA champion will be? Who cares about all of the billionaires in the world? We have to care about life. And care about representing God. The life that you live, it's very important. It's very important to realize that you have a gift. As we sit here before you now, in a matter of four hours, I got the news of four different people who have passed away. Just like that. Just gone. Were they all saved? I have no idea. But I do know that a couple of them were. But that's not for me to judge. I'll leave that up to the deceased and to God. You hear right now. You hear God speaking to your heart. What are you going to do with your life? When will you realize that your purpose for living is to serve God? That's how you maximize life. That's how you honor yourself. Now, the life that we live is to be through Christ. And there are a lot of people who reject him. A lot of uh, different religions out there. A lot of different denominations out there. A lot of non-believers out there. We've gotten to a place so, so much so that we don't even know why we do what we do in the church anymore. Just the other day, a Muslim approached me and told me about a Christian that was harassing them about getting saved. And the Muslim said to me, how do they know that I'm not saved and that they're lost? 
And it occurred to me that the Lord has said he has other sheep that we know not of, and they too know him by his name. So I'm not at liberty to say who's saved and who isn't. That's between you and Christ. But I will say this, that I do believe that there are a lot of individuals who are trying to lead other folks to their churches and not to Christ. I say that because in that conversation that I had with that Muslim, the Muslim told me that the individual's approach was, how do you know you'll get to heaven? You know you can't get into heaven unless, unless you know Jesus. Well, yeah, I believe that. But I don't think that's the right approach. I'm sort of done with fire and brimstone sermons. I need to teach about life. I need to teach people how to respect life. Once they respect life, now we can refer to Jesus Christ, who is life. As I said earlier, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. But we, 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 we have a lot of individuals who are trying to fill up their churches and not the kingdom of God. All these churches, and we're still living in chaos. All of these different denominations, and we're still at each other's throats. All of these different tenets and principles and things of that nature, and we still live in segregated neighborhoods. I want to enjoy life, and I will. And I will not be discouraged by what I see going on in the world. People have grown leery of coming to church because some of us want to act as if we're holier than thou. And then we get in church and act a different way. My beloved, we got to stop developing the church into a social club. Because that's what it seems to be nowadays. We just come there to socialize. Treating the church as if it's a relief center. A pickup point. A place just to go on Sunday morning. That's not how I remember church as a child. I remember going to church and glorifying God, being on a high for the Lord, talking about Jesus around the dinner table. But we don't do that anymore. We found other things to do, other things to talk about. We have marketed Jesus so much that we've made others not want him. That's a sad thing, my beloved. We don't tell the world how he really is, but we present him the way that others have shoved him down our throats. The Bible says one thing, but Michelangelo's paintings say another. The Bible says Jesus looked like this. And we have other folks who say, no, he looked like them or that. We've taken God's word and we've twisted it from the very beginning. Doing what we can to destroy one another. I want you to know that it wasn't like that in the beginning. In the beginning, Adam and Eve walked with God. They cherished being with God every day. If you read further in this book of Genesis and look at the sixth chapter, you see that even Noah walked with God. They desired God. And God wants to walk with us right now. And he will if we allow him. He'll be with us every step of the way. I would invite you to have him in your life. He's more than anything that you could ever have and will make you more than a conqueror. 
So again, it really doesn't matter what the beginning was as far as my life is concerned. I came here under two beautiful parents. I had a set, two sets of grandparents that were awesome. I didn't need anything else. I wish I knew. But then again, maybe it's a good thing that I don't. Because I could be an ancestor, or I should say an offspring of one of those children of men, those sons of God who saw the daughters of the earth and looked upon them and took them as wives. You read that story. But in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And while others argue over the beginning of the world and time, I'll continue to believe the word of God that says God created the heavens and the earth. I'll believe that. It's in my spirit. As life continues to be disrespected and unappreciated during these times, I will remember that life was given by the grace of God. Life is to be cherished. Life is to be enjoyed. Life is much too short to question its meaning, its purpose, or its beginning. Yes, we'd like to know when the beginning was and what happened then, but I'm satisfied and thankful for what I do know. I do know that God breathed into me and made me a living being. I do know that God expects something out of me while living this life. I do know that God expects me to be respectful towards humanity. I do know that God expects worship and praise out of me. What I don't know is when the end will come. Just like I don't know the beginning. All I know is that in the beginning, God. God bless you. We hope that you were blessed by the message for the day, and we look forward to you joining us again at the same time next week. Have a great life and be empowered by saying, I anchor my belief in God. Grace and peace, family. This is Bishop Marvin Sapp, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Everybody, this is your girl Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicki Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network.